Art is everywhere. Art is in the very fabric of our skies and landscapes and waterways, tying together powerful narratives of creation and song lines, weaving who we are with where we live. Song and dance, music and mark making, stories, knowledges and practices that have been formed and reformed over thousands of generations. Art is everywhere. Art is in the world around you if you take the time. Take the time to not just hear, but listen to the bird song. Take the time to watch rather than just see the light playing on the rippling water or the changing colours of the sunrise as it drenches the twinkling treetops and escarpments. To watch and learn from, to mimic the movements of the animals, to take the time to take in the smells of the fire and flowers, the rain and the rotting leaves, the smell of a dry wind and the dirt under your fingernails. And if you can wait long enough to take the time to taste the story of how a place came into being, either through the creation story or the creative story of science, art is everywhere. Art is in the choices around your home, whether you're conscious of it or not. Those family photos you're so proud of, you went and got them enlarged and framed. The music you ask Siri to play for you, the song you sing to help an elder remember a time long forgotten, the overly optimistic pile of books that chastise you to read them, <laughs> and the time you take thinking about the exact right words to say to a loved one who needs your help, or that handcrafted object you publicly display because it somehow brings you joy or maybe it starts a conversation with someone. And the jewellery your niece gave you when she came back from exploring the world. Art is everywhere. Art is in the stories you tell of how your family came to be. The artful stories honed through endless repetition of the journey of your great-grandparents as they took that journey to escape the troubles in search of a better life. Or the story of what you left behind to make your own way in the world in search of an opportunity or how your people have known no other place than this. Let no one say the past is dead, the past is all around us and within. Art is how we make and remember history. Art is a single moment in time we wish to endure, wish to endure beyond this moment to the next and somehow add to the flow of time for someone else to understand what has gone before. Art explains the world around us and gives us a role in it as a, the receivers of art or the believers in art, creators and contributors, interpreters and promoters. Art is what we do to express the human condition to each other in all of our similarities and our differences. And yet somehow it has the power to create disagreement and discord as well, as we take exception to the artistic intention or reception or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Art is our attempt to make our ephemeral life substantive. Art can be contrary and messy. It can challenge and cajole. It can affirm who you are and help you be something new. Art can comfort and cause discomfort in equal measure. Art can connect you to tradition and free you from it. It can help you retrace the long track of time and equally have no memory of what has gone before. Art is for the curious character who wishes to see what is beyond the horizon and then goes about creating a world where that journey is possible. Art is the power to shape the world. Art is the power to move people. Art is the power to create change, to tell stories of what is required of us to all evolve. Art is everywhere. Art is at the centre of any culture that values the composition of communities and collective problem solving. Art is soft and contestable, approachable and open to conjecture and opinion in the most joyous way. And at the centre of art is the urge to be creative and the people who follow their instincts and fascinations, train their senses and take the time to reflect back the needs of society are called artists. 
artists are everywhere. The role of an artist is to find the pressure point, the dilemma, the crucial societal conflict, the flaws and strengths, and shine an all too brief light on it, to transport away or travel deeper into the question at hand. Artists help create a vocabulary for a preferred future where we can help imagine an audience what could be. Engaging the mirror neuron effect where as humans we learn from watching and mirroring, mirroring the actions of others, best seen in how a child watches a parental figure and learns from them the su survival behaviours. Art is effectively a way to pave the social change by engaging in needs of the people and give space for the exploration of great moral and ethical problems, to give a platform to debate and discussion and act as a social conscience when functioning well. Art is everywhere and art is influential. The most important question for me at this juncture is that of representation and the role we need to play in the achieving of our rights as First Nations peoples. We seem on a very familiar precipice of change, a place where we have known before, a place where our grandparents and parents have stood and hoped for the change we seek, a change where we relied on others to help shape our futures, a time when we spoke of our aspirations and hopes so that we could change the hearts of a heartless past. And when the newly minted Prime Minister gave his acceptance speech, you could feel a sense of relief and change in the air. And a cousin leant across to me and said, we're now the dog that caught the truck. <laughs> Recently, I was at a dinner at a friend's house and between the garlic bread and the couscous salad, an objectionable fellow guest took great delight in giving me unwarranted advice that there was no way to win a referendum unless we told our stories better that we posed the proposition in terms of white benefit rather than the righteousness of our case, how the population would be somehow made better through the granting of a voice to First Australians, that the population of a country needed to know our story more, needed to access our pain and suffering to help justify the investment in this venture. I was animated in my response. <laughs> Not so much that I was angry that decades of truth-telling and sharing and royal commissions and reports and studies and academic papers and talks and debates could be summarily dismissed as not enough, but more because this fork-wielding dinner bomber <laughs> was again assuming all the responsibility lay on the minority to convince the majority that we had to play the role of victim for an appreciative audience to persuade them to do what is clearly right today from a historical wrong. It reminded me uh, of a political march I attended as a young man uh, at the end of the Joe Bjorke Peterson era in Queensland, where we marched and chanted down George Street and we came to the gates of Parliament House and rattled them until they fell off their hinges, unhinged. <laughs> when the gates fell, there was a stunned silence and no one knew what to do. <laughs> and I then thought, send in the poets and the painters, send in the storytellers and the dancers, the singers and the law bosses. Let them take charge of the next stage, what is required for this change to happen. They can do that. As the vanilla ice cream and kafuti were being served, I thought, this spoon dodging armchair reconciliator <laughs> had taught me a lesson. In many ways, they were right. That the voice to parliament was not the only thing that was needed, but there needs to be a voice to the people. A healing power of truth telling, fantastic, but also a storytelling that connects us to our place brings us together in the appreciation of our art, yes, but also a deeper understanding of our culture and how we live in this country. Art is everywhere and artists make it real. Thank you very much.